I have a problem of a most troubling nature. It is with a fist of cold alabaster I wish to rule over the underground realm of hell. For this is where chaos brews and multiplies into an abundance that overflows into the heart of mankind. My father was the example of what a true ruler of hell should be, strong, stern, and cruel. He relished the moments a poor soul required a scourging or a reprimand, for his passion truly was in the distribution of pain. And some say that he committed suicide simply to feel that pain himself. But time waits for no one, hell included, and thus a problem has arisen. You see, Lucifer is not my name. It is a title bestowed upon the heir of the devil and his bride. Ironically enough, it is the most holy vows of matrimony that, he, that sealed the most unholy position of Lucifer upon oneself. However, hell was unprepared for my father's passing, and thus a complication has arose. I have not yet married, and so I ventured to earth to find myself a bride fit for a king, a strong, decent, and pure woman who would help me bear this crown's weight. Others have chosen unholy brides, but I believe they expire much quicker under the pressures of evil than those of a pure heart. I'm simply saying that. Why do you just say things and never do things? Where's your sense of adventure? Right next to my sense of taste. Simple. I find adventure in my routine. I find it at when I meet at the bus stop. I am a simple man. But you could be stronger, Alexander. What do you believe in? You must think that there's something greater for you in the world. Is there something wrong with me? Well, you're not exactly bold. Quiet, yes. Peaceful, yes. But I don't want you to get hurt. I care about what happens to you. But I cannot be your nurse. Well, why must I be bold? Or strong? Is it not my right to be afraid of the world? There's much to fear, I suppose. I guess not everyone can be as brave as Maximilian Greco. Maximilian Greco? Well, certainly. There's no more bold a soul in the city as Max. He's strong, competitive, always trying to progress, unafraid of what may stop him. Perhaps it's his ambition to turn this city into a bustling metropolis that attracts so many to him. You know he wants to be mayor. Does he? Indeed. He's told me so. When did he tell you that? Oh, one night when he was at my apartment for dinner. He's campaigning to get my father a seat on the city council. My dad will win, and Max will be praised for his political ingenuity. You do admire him, don't you? Oh, I don't know. He does drop by from time to time. I admire his ambition more than his person. I would rather someone looked at me and saw more than just a clever woman. But if he asked me to marry him, I would only say yes, because there's no one to rival him. It is unfortunate, but it's the truth. Oh, it's getting late. I have dinner plans. Are you going downtown? Actually, I think I'll sit here and have another drink. You go on. I'll get this one. Very well. Good night, Alexander. Good night, Captain. What can I do? I arranged for a day that Catherine and I could be alone. And all I could do was attend the tale of the great and powerful Greco? I feel like such a fool. What can I do? What you need, buddy, is an advantage. <laughs> Excuse me? What you need is an advantage. And I believe your advantage is standing over there. Who the hell is he? It's funny that you should choose those exact words. <laughs> I am Lucifer the Fifth. Lucifer the Fifth? I must be drunk. I'm being tormented by strange visions of monsters. Oh, come now, friend. You've stumbled upon a much needed advantage. If you're my advantage, I'd much rather wallow in my sadness. Go away and buy someone else a drink. I don't think you understand me, friend. I can do a great deal for you. With my help, you can become the luckiest man on earth. Kings would bow to you, 
and women flock to you. This woman, for example. You want her, do you not? I love her. She's smart, ambitious, brave, and generally caring towards all things. Even for a pathetic excuse for a human like me. Oh, come now. Do you expect to gain Kathleen's love this way, simpering like a little whelp? I suppose not. But she's enamored with Maximilian. Max doesn't seem that threatening. Oh, make no mistake. He's the most powerful man I know. And yet the least corrupt. Never would he abuse his power. Is he not aggressive? Very, and well respected. Then, regardless of his influence, you still have an advantage. Which is? Me, Alexander. I've lived for the last hundred years, and I'm still quite young, for we demons live much longer than mortals. I've been through many terrible situations, and yet, here I am, and together, we shall bring him down so low that he will dread the name Alexander. If you need money, I know of treasures that could rival any tycoon's account. If you need power, I can manipulate people to believe in you and trust you with the protection of their well-being. If you need a clear path, I will clear-cut your opponents like trees in a forest and I will cut them with a blade of pestilence and madness, leaving you free of blame for their untimely and yet opportune deaths. And if you want love, I can turn you into the very thing every woman desires. I can give you talents and skills that women seek, strength, intellect, craftsmanship, and poise. Any of these and more, ask and you will receive, my friend. And what do I pay? Pardon? I am no idiot. Everything has a price. Well, I suppose that there is one thing you could give me. My usual price. Well worth it, though. What is it? Your soul. <laughs> My soul? Indeed. It is quite a hefty payment at first. But it really is worth it in the end. When you think about it, you would dedicate your life to a certain way of living. So why not dedicate your soul, which has the same weight as your life, to a more fulfilled living? For example, Catherine, in marriage you dedicate your soul to her. If you were to ask me for her hand in marriage, which I could bring about for you if you did, your soul would simply be an advanced payment. You see, I'm reasonable. I would allow you to live the life of leisure I would provide for you, provided that you do not attempt to foil my efforts or prolong your time here on Earth. I am not as cruel as some depictions have portrayed me. I suppose you aren't. How do we make this... deal? First you list your terms. All right, I'll play your game. First, I want your help to gain Catherine's hand in marriage but I'm a man of honor. I don't want you to work your puppetry. I want you to give me the abilities to impress her. Secondly, you will need to provide for our family. We will need wealth, and I would like a decent status in society. That'll make the impression on Catherine all the easier. You have a good strategy, boy. But what about this Max character? <laughs> well, I suppose, could you make me mayor? I could make you a king. Then make it so. You and I were made for each other. Is that the end of your list? Yes. Very well. I believe I can impress even you with my skills, for I proclaim you can be mayor by the next election, obtaining a robust salary to provide for your future endeavors, and thus making you the epitome of desire. And soon enough, you will be approached by Catherine. That's quite a lofty challenge. Indeed. But do not doubt my powers, for I shall turn these promises into definite truths. And so it shall come to pass. Do we have an accord? We do indeed. My friends and supporters, you may ask me if I know what the future looks like. Well, here is the answer. The future is as bright as we make it. 
many years ago. We never believed that electricity would be able to change our lives. But Thomas Edison looked at the future, and he set out to make it brighter. And now, we all have light, thanks to him. And we stand here illuminated and evolved. Recently, this country was shaken by a tremendous force of war. The sons of this city had to go out and defend our liberty. They looked at the future, and they set out to make it brighter. Now I know some of these brave men from my own time on that very same battlefront, and I assure you that it is men like them that will help us reach a new height. We all must remember that we are a team, and only together can we achieve great things. So while you want me to be your next mayor, and believe me, I'm campaigning like crazy, <laughs> you must remember that it is your support and your vision of the future which truly matters. All right, Alexander. Welcome to the world of politics. The first thing that you have to know is that this is a battle. If you're in this, you're in it to win. You take no prisoners and you show no weakness because your opponent is looking for it. And when they find it, they will tear you apart. Do you understand? Yeah. All right. Now, what about Max? What are his weaknesses? I don't know. Well then, while you're drawing a blank, I'm looking at his most recent speech. And my first thought is, your easiest supporters are going to be those who don't support Max. Whoever is not on his side is left vulnerable. But you can give them something to vote for. But how? Simple. You're going to give a speech. I am? Well, you're not going to get any supporters just standing there, that's for sure. But I haven't given a huge public speech like that before. Then I hope you believe in beginner's luck. Okay, but wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't you think that we're rushing into this? Of course I do. But unfortunately, we're running out of time. Maximilian already has a huge jump on us. And he's not slowing down anytime soon. But I'm not prepared. What do I do? All you have to do is contradict everything Max says. What you need is quick support, and you're going to get that by picking up those who don't support Max. If he says something hopeful, you use fear. If he goes high, you go low. And remember, that fire against fire only burns the world down until the flames reach the ocean. You are that ocean. And now get out there and put out Max. I know many of you have never heard of me, and I must admit, I am very commonplace. But I think that's what this city needs. My opponent says that the future looks bright, but he hasn't been on the streets like I have. He hasn't seen those sad people living in poverty while he goes out and drinks cocktails. He tells you everything's going to be all right because he thinks that's what you want to hear. But what I think this city needs is some cold honesty. The future is bleak. Our soldiers are broken from the war, and if we continue to party and act as we do, we may very well send ourselves spiraling downward. I believe this city deserves better than that. We deserve to be the best, but the only way to do that is if we see the truth. I'm talking to you, the homeless, the broken, the sad, and the impoverished. Let me help you, because I know what it's like to give up hope and come so close to losing everything. I know your pain, but I can tell you I know how to make it better. We must show all those on Wall Street, all the Carnegies and Rockefellers, that we are just as strong and just as good as they are. We deserve better than we are given. And if you put those dreams into me and let me stand as your representative, as your mayor, I will yell the truth from the rooftops of this very city. We deserve to be heard. Yeah. do deserve to be heard. But I believe in making the future better. And so with your support, I intend to improve the standard of living through advancing the services and the technology that this city provides to you. While our public transportation is stellar and one of the best systems in the country, it can be improved. Now I have money of my own, but with your support, I've managed to gain even more than I intend to use to add to our public transport system once I become mayor. Not to mention, I've already donated a great sum of money to help erect a new hospital 
with better facilities than any other in the state. Truly, we are entering a new age with better technology and great advancements in our knowledge. This should be celebrated. Look at that and tell me that the future does not look brighter. It looks terrifying. What has Maximilian done to improve our lives? He's increased public gas consumption and hiked up the price from getting from your home to your job. Don't you see? Maximilian Greco is slowly but surely ruling over our lives. He treats the position as mayor like he's going to be crowned king. Sure, he's giving you a hospital, but is he really giving you security? No. Security is ensuring that you never need to go to the hospital. And that's why I place my assets in the help fund in the local firefighters and policemen who help keep this city safe. And as far as public transportation is concerned, well, I'd much rather wear down my shoes and ride one of Maximilian's machines. I don't need luxury to come. I don't need luxury to be comfortable. All I need are my shoes and the will to walk. Now who's with me? And may God let us walk. For though we may have little fortune, all we need are our shoes to walk like kings. and join our cause. It was a testament to how reason prevails over willpower. Nothing more. Oh, come on and give yourself a compliment that's well deserved. You're running for mayor for a reason. It's because you're the greatest council member of the city. The man never had a chance. You were truly magnificent. But if it weren't for the support of the other delegates, I wouldn't even have a prayer getting a new budget plan passed nor the new designs for a highway. I'm nothing without those other men. But they support you because you're a great leader. You've earned all of their support through your actions. No one thought an act could be passed in a week, but it was your ambition, your drive that made it happen. You are truly amazing. I'm glad that you think so, Catherine, but do you still think that I'm a good person? I'm glad you think so, Catherine. But do you still think I'm a good person? More than good. You're brilliant. I just said so. But do you think that my intentions are pure? Am I protecting the people that I represent? Or am I now doing this for personal gain? I originally thought I would do this to help the community. But as of recently, I feel that my motives have been lost as a distant memory. Do you still see good in my actions? Alex. You've burdened yourself with a great responsibility. And that's something that most people in this city cannot experience truly. And the fact that you carry this burden makes you a good person. But being a great person comes from taking that burden and looking forward, regardless of how tired you are from carrying the weight. And you do that every day when you're trying to improve this city. And you make a difference, believe me. Some days the burden is so heavy so heavy that I might need help to carry the weight. Well, you will always have me. Really? You'll be there for me? Always. Then, can I ask you something? Anything. Catherine, will you marry me? Catherine, will you marry me? Alexander, I, this is so sudden, I mean, there has to be planning and preparation. You cannot simply... Please understand. I don't object to your personality or your status. It's simply that I feel like I don't know you that well. I still remember that small man who asked me for strength. And while I'm happy that you found it, I don't see that sweet man anymore. I wonder where he went. I cannot help but think that you are not the Alexander that I knew that day in the bar. And I feel like I failed him. Catherine, you did nothing wrong. I am a changed man, but if you don't want me to change, I won't. 
I simply thought you were right. I should take action. I should become more bold. I heard a calling through your voice. And that's why I don't want anyone by my side besides you to take this burden up. Because through all that I've accomplished, you still inspire me. And I need inspiration. Catherine, I just hope that you'll recognize that man and see that he still needs your help. There he is. I see him. He's asking a favor of me. Is it important? Oh, yes. Are you going to help him? Yes, I think I will. Incidental. Putting in some long hours, huh? Actually, I'm glad I ran into you. Are you all right? You seem to be talking to yourself a lot today. I'm just preparing for the rally tomorrow. I'm really trying to gain support from my constituents. I know what you mean. I just finished a speech I'm going to help present to the Finance Guild. Still trying to catch up on your electric debate prowess. Both of our voices are heard in the debate. What's the point of having one? Is it now? Because it seems that your voice is heard a lot more than mine in these debates. Could you tell me why that is? I have an exceptional campaign manager. Lucky you. You know, I had ideas like yours, but I could never get the campaign off the ground. Yet, you seem to have the magic touch for these sort of things. I guess so. But soon, it will fade. I don't follow you. Well, come now, boy. You must admit that your ideas, while touching, have no possible way of winning you an election. You're too dark, too focused on the negatives of life. Well, I believe that people need to be told the truth. Well, you'll see soon enough where that'll get you. Soon those people whom you trust with your future will come furious and uncontrolled. Soon the fire you fed will burn you. That's the sad truth you must face. You've made a deal with the devil, son. How could you possibly know about that? Well, come now, boy. Do you think you're the first to try it? Many have, and they all end up in the same place their own special little circle of hell. No. It can't be. If I were you, I'd just walk away from it all. <clears throat> Max, find the next bus to God knows where to find shelter from the storm you started. Max, admit it, boy. This only ends one way. You're right. It does. Done. I did what needed doing. You idiot. You're getting married tomorrow. Do you think you'll be able to look Kathleen in the eyes and simply say I do and walk away with this on your conscience? I suppose so. Yes. You suppose? It's what you gave your soul for. It's what you wished for from the beginning. Now you had to go and make things complicated. How does this complicate anything? You killed Max. How did you know about that? I know everything, Alexander. There's nowhere you can hide from me, nor is there any sin that goes about without my knowing. Well, you know what? I don't see how killing Max makes anything worse. It doesn't, but you it don't- there. You see? And boy, am I glad to have you say it. You know, your entrance into my life has shown me a great deal. I used to feel so imprisoned by those rules that the people made me follow ever since my days in grammar school. But now having broken them, I feel so liberated. Yes, but liberated at a cost. You still have to be careful. Why? Why should you care what sins I commit? I'm still giving you my soul, and you're still giving me my marriage. My marriage. Tonight's my last night as a bachelor. I think this is cause for celebration. Oh, yes. I think I deserve to have one last fling as a going away present from the bachelor's life. 
And I think I know just the person to include in this. Your fiance? Of course not. No. Tonight, I'll go see Lillian. Lillian? You can't possibly mean Lillian the bridesmaid. Why not? Besides, tomorrow I'll be married to Captain for the rest of my life. I need to do this, Lucifer. You don't understand. You're not human. Besides, you've already secured my marriage tomorrow, so why worry about it? Yes, but you don't understand that those vows that you profess tomorrow, those sacred vows of matrimony, will be empty vows if you do this. Empty vows mean nothing to me. You would not be officially married, and I would have to start over. Then start over. It's not like you're going anywhere. I cannot allow one project to weigh me down. I have other things to do. Well, then you know what? That's your problem to deal with on your own time. I, however, don't see how you need to be legitimate with my, very, my marriage vows in order for you to consider me married. Alexander, listen. I operate based on a strict set of rules. Rules that my father followed, and his father, and his grandfather. These rules prohibit me from breaking a promise. But they allow me to find loopholes in those promises, which is why the devil always wins. <clears throat> but in this case, there is no loophole in matrimony. It is either legitimate or false, which is why you must remain pure for at least one more day. After that, you can burn the vows you've made if you want me to collect your soul early. Or you can take advantage of my generosity and live the life of leisure as long as you can in purity. You can't tell me what to do. I can advise you what not to do. Well, I don't want to hear you give me a moral lecture. Alexander, don't do this to her. Who? Catherine. She idolizes you, and it would break her heart to find out. You know what? If it matters that much to you, find a loophole. You're good at that sort of thing. Alexander, don't do this! Not now! Not to her. Oh, Alexander, you came so close. This is what I did to you, and this is what I wanted. I've accomplished what I've needed to. I didn't expect the corruption to ripen this quickly. Sire! What is it, Screwtape? I have urgent news for you. Your mother, the queen, has fallen ill. I'm afraid that the burden of hell is upon her so greatly that she may not last another week. Sire, if you're not wedded soon, I'm afraid that your brother Ivan will gain the throne. I hear rumors of your brother wishing to exile you if you should not return before the queen dies. Well, if I know my brother, those rumors are most likely true. How much time do I have, Screwtape? Well, I'm not a- How long, Screwtape? Three days, sire. Very well. You may go. And tell them that Lucifer the Fifth will be returning soon. Right away, sire. You will hurt her, Alexander. And though I am the devil, I do know that pain can cut very deep. But make no mistake, I still have one card left to play. It is one that my father gave me, a cruel trick that he had once taught me. But to live in his shadow is to live in darkness. <clears throat> And I had hoped that I could stay in the light just a little longer. But sinners who challenge the devil himself must be brought back to a cruel reality. Tell me how much of a lech I am, because the deed's already done. I know. I believe I've reached a conclusion on the matter. Which is? I will allow this event that has just besmirched your honor to pass as if it were nothing. I always knew you were reasonable. However, there is one condition. And what condition is that, my friend? You must give me your soul now. What? Don't act like you didn't hear me, boy. I said you will give me the soul, which is rightfully mine, now. But the deal was that you would get my soul when I married Catherine. Have I ever not given you what you wanted? 
No. Have I but... relinquished any of my promises? Except this last Alexander, one. Alexander, take a seat. I said you will take a seat now. Good. Now, have you ever thought that maybe you were the one in the wrong? And that you were the one who blatantly disregarded my wishes and defied my standards? You must realize that you've brought this upon yourself with your foolish arrogance. But our deal was that you would give my soul when I married Catherine. True. But when you go up to that altar tomorrow, every word of every vow will be a lie. Meaning, you've prolonged your life here and I will have to wait for a divorce so that we can start again with this process. Well, I'm sorry, but the world is not waiting on you. I have other places to be, especially at this time. So you can either give up the ghost or prepare for a living hell that I will plague your family with so that you will probably hang yourself. If you think the extraction of your soul will hurt, that pain will pale in comparison to the pain of happiness being slowly stripped away from you, but it will not just affect you. No. Catherine and your possible children will feel it as well. So, if you still have any love of Catherine, you would not wish this life upon her. And so now, you choose. Today we are here to witness two people commit themselves to the holy bonds of matrimony. Alexander and Catherine have come to the conclusion that they cannot live without each other. And so I have come to officially witness their love and their commitment. Alexander, do you take Catherine to be your bride in sickness and in health, through heaven and hell, from now to eternity? I do. And Catherine, do you take Alexander to be your husband in sickness and in health, through heaven and hell, from now until eternity? I do. Well then, with the power invested in me, I bestow upon you these rings, your sign of matrimony. I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss and put on the rings. Oh. <laughs> Alexander. If you are confused, then let me tell you this. The night before he died, Alexander died a tragic death. His soul was extracted from his body, leaving only the husk of, of his corpse behind. And then I, being a clever and maniacal Lucifer, entered his soulless body and impersonated him from the night of his wedding until today, which is the day after. And this was very well placed. For now, I have my bride. However, my mother's death will come at any day now, and with her death comes my coronation, and thus my crown. And so it falls that I must tell my wife exactly who she's married. But I can't. I realize that the truth would wilt the beautiful flower that is my wife. And yes, you may be skeptical that the devil could have feelings for someone else, but you have not felt the weight of a father's overbearing gaze that even death cannot hide. You have not felt the pain that is in my heart every time I say the words, I am Lucifer. And most importantly, you have not woken from these nightmares to see someone so utterly and completely free. You have not reached for freedom from behind the iron bars of duty simply to touch the dew on the grass that grows so freely just beyond your cage. That's what Catherine is. And though I long for my title, 
I could not cage such a beautiful bird, for it would crush my hopes of freedom. But I could not betray my family. To become Lucifer is the highest honor anyone can obtain in hell. So I must remain strong, just as Father had taught me. Take no prisoners, he would say, and think ruthless. Yes, ruthless. Alexander. Yes, dear. My God, what are you doing up at such an ungodly hour? What woke you? Is it a nightmare? Oh, it's nothing. I've simply been stressed out lately. What's wrong? Tell me. It's not exactly something you want to hear. And yet, I will hear it nonetheless. I'm Lucifer. What? I'm not Alexander. I'm Lucifer the Fifth. I don't understand what you're saying. I'm the devil, Lucifer, Satan, Beelzebub, all of them. Within this husk of a body is evil incarnate. And what's worse is that you're married to this incarnation of all that is impure. Wait, what's going on? Have you been drinking? Stop this, Alexander, you're scaring Please. me. Please, I beg you to believe me. I'm Lucifer, it's the truth. What's going on, Alexander? Perhaps I can clarify things. Wait here. Before you were married, you were sitting in a bar together. Back then, yours was a very different relationship. You went out to dinner and he stayed behind, discouraged and quite convinced he could never marry you. That's when we struck a deal. I would provide the means by which he could marry you, and in exchange for this service, he would give me, Lucifer, his soul. Together, we persisted in our advances towards you, but he died in the bar that day. Nothing more than a puppet suspended by my strings. Sure, he had life, but he pledged his soul to me. This cannot be true. This is the painful truth. And if it makes any difference, I regret it all. What? I regret everything I've made Alexander do. He had all of these good intentions, and I warped these intentions into malevolent thoughts of selfishness and pride. Wait. If he promised his soul in exchange for our wedding, why isn't he still here? Did you rip it from him after his vows, like an all too serious joke? Before the vows. What? I took his soul before the vows. He had an affair with another woman. The vows would have meant nothing, and he would have prolonged his life here. Strictly business. I see your motivation. But that isn't all. I realized what I had done to Alexander, and knew that you wouldn't have been happy with him. Think what you will, Catherine, but I truly do love you. No, you are manipulative, to say the least. So at least give me the courtesy of telling me the truth. The truth, the most blunt truth, is that I need you. I am soon to be crowned Lucifer, king of hell and all of its inhabitants. But for the coronation, I need a queen. And you chose me, who would not hurt a fly. Why me? Because you can see such beauty. I could have thousands of women for my selection back home, but they're all empty, full of contempt and greed. They would just as quickly mock me as they would kiss me. You, I had hoped, could see something in me. For so long, I was defined by what I am not. And for so long, I thought I was not kind or capable of loving. But then I saw you, and had hoped that you could finally say that I am kind, that I am not cruel. 
and that you could see something good inside of me. But I suppose that I was foolish to assume such. You're not foolish. But it takes time, much more than a year, let alone a day. Am I to assume that I said my vows to you on my wedding day? Correct. Then I will remain loyal to you, but only as a fiancé, for I can't say I truly know you, so I will make you an offer. Which is? You must take me down to hell. Once we are there, you will have three days to convince me to marry you. If you should fail, I will not wed you. Catherine, if you're going to hand me this offer, then I must let you know. You may never leave hell once you go down there. I can only take you down. I cannot bring you back out. Only holy beings can. All the better. For if you truly love me, you will not allow me to suffer such a terrible Catherine, fate. Catherine, please. Are you adamant on those terms? Indeed I am. Very well. Take my hand and follow me. You're obviously quite sick. Let me take the throne. If not forever, then just for a little while so you can rest. You know not the duty your father bestowed upon me with his untimely suicide. I have the power for as long as I'm alive, with no heir to take up the burden. But I am an heir to the throne. Ivan, quit with your persistent petulance. Your annoyance only weakens me more. That's kind of the point, isn't it? Silence, Lynx. Mother, he will not be here before you pass. Please, you must listen to reason. I will listen to the decree of your father. It is for his sake and his wishes that I sit upon this throne. He had faith in your brother, as do I, and so should you. Ivan, can you come here for a minute? What is it now, Lynx? Perhaps we should let her rest for a while. We won't curry any favor with pestering. I do not seek her favor. You know as well as I that her favor means nothing, but her death means everything. Unfortunately, as part of the Lucifer family, we cannot kill our own blood. So we must inflict her death upon her in a different, more subtle form if we're to take the throne. Every day we don't put pressure on her is a day my brother can gain an advantage. Oh, come now. Your brother's marriage is next to impossible. That is true. Sire, you will not believe this, but your brother has returned. What? Yes, your brother has returned, and he has a beautiful lady with him. What's that, Screwtape? Has my son returned? Indeed, madam, but you best be addressing him as Lucifer V. Oh, what a coronation this is indeed. Lucifer the fifth my enemy! Quiet, please. We cannot show all our cards simply because there is a new player. Perhaps this could be advantageous. Mother. Well, you certainly are a sight for sore eyes. It seems like ages since I've last seen you. Indeed. We were beginning to think you weren't going to make it. Look at you. Lucifer the fifth. What a scoundrel you are. And how did he pick you up, my dear? We can talk about that after introductions. Catherine, this is my brother, Ivan. How do you do, madam? This is his wife, Lynx. I look forward to having you as a sister. This is my dedicated mother, Sidria. You have a great deal ahead of you, my dear. I hope you understand the responsibility. She does. I told her. <clears throat> oh, and of course. Who could forget good old skirt tape? Our dutiful jack of all trades. A pleasure to meet you, madame. Everyone, this is Catherine. Well, Catherine, I'm glad to be giving you such responsibility. I'm glad that you're glad. 
But I'm afraid the rite of passage will have to wait just a little longer. What do you mean, love? Are you not wed yet? It's slightly more complicated than that. If you're not married yet, when will you be? Uh, three days, hopefully. Three days, brother. You do know that we'll put a great deal of stress upon our mother. I know. It was my idea. Quite a terribly dangerous gamble to be taking. Why in three days? To get situated. It lessens the shock for us. I make no promises, but I will try to hold on that long for you, son. Look at them. Who? All of them. Playing with the throne like a toy. They never cared about what my desires were. Frankly, it's because our desires don't really matter to them. We were so close, damn it! Hush, darling. We still are very close. Perhaps even closer than we were before. We now know that we have three days to make sure that the wedding never happens. How so? Are you blind? Can you not see how horribly uncomfortable Catherine was? All we have to do is make her so wrought with discomfort that she abandons the vows and that she tip over Sidria. Leaving only you and I to be the rulers of hell. Lynx, my dear, you're a genius. I know. So while I apply my genius to separating Catherine from your brother, you do the same to that troublesome sibling of yours. Quite a plan. Yes. Quite a plan indeed. I do say so myself. Yes, it is rather spectacular, isn't it? Perhaps I could interest you in a tour? I'm sorry, but perhaps another time? <sighs> Very well, madame. Another time? What are you saying, Catherine? Oh, God, now you're stuck here for an eternity. You made a deal with the devil. This is what you get. Oh, Lucifer, you are a sly dog, aren't you? Why does all this evil have to fall on me? What did I do to deserve this? You know damn well what you did, Catherine. You saw a glimmer of hope, and you tried to grab at it. You thought, maybe he wasn't all bad. Maybe he really did love you. What? Seriously, you can't mean Lucifer. First Alexander. Phew. Then the devil himself. Catherine, you're a fool. You offered him three days to convince you to marry him. Wait, three days was her idea? But Lucifer said, why would he protect her? It was her idea. But now you realize there is no chance that you can ever love him. Okay. And yet when he said it, said what? When he said that he loved me, Seems like it could almost be true. Oh my. Wait a minute. Catherine, you're a fool! Innocent down to hell? I know. An innocent soul ruling over the damned. That's an oxymoron to say the least. What were you thinking? I don't know. If father were alive. But he isn't, Ivan. Am I to behold to every one of father's precedents with every action I perform? With that mentality, nothing changes. Do you really want things to change around here? I want to be my own person. Father set a stellar example of what a true Lucifer should be. But that's all that I know. My greed and envy compel me to know more than just what Father taught. The longer we live in his shadow, the longer we die a slow and painful death until the river of time erodes us down to nothing. 
I don't wish to die that way. Or at least let my followers die that way. I want to change because it means the world changes with me. And that's why I chose Catherine. Because God forbid we choose a decent wife. No, we have to choose two-faced whores and backstabbers. You are speaking madness. I'm speaking with my own voice. And I'm glad that it has some sound of hope. At long last, someone down here can hear it. You are a traitor to your blood. How dare you defile our father's name? How dare you even speak it? Beware, brother. I will ensure you never sit upon that throne. Ivan, you will not be able to understand what I just found out. What is it? Spit it out, woman. He loves her. You're right. I don't understand it. <laughs> Your brother loves Catherine. Go on. Don't you see? Today, when he suggested the three days deal was his idea, it was actually Catherine's. He was just protecting her. He knew that once we discovered it was her idea, we would tear her to shreds. Was she wrong to assume so? Not at all, but that isn't the point. The point is that he sheltered her. When she came here, I could smell it on her. But after our conversation, I can confirm that they are in love. And how does that help us? Have you ever felt love? I cannot say that I have. And we both know that your father never felt love. True. So? That begs the question, can a demon feel love? I suppose not. Don't you see, your brother, when he makes his wedding vows, will say that he truly loves Catherine, and that makes him... An idiot? <laughs> a human. Evil incarnate cannot physically love, so his powers will be stripped from him once the two are declared husband and wife. And if he's human, he can die. That's brilliant. But how do we do it? Human or not, he still has my blood. And Lucifers cannot betray their own bloodline. Otherwise, we would have killed Sadria long ago. I found this juicy and vital piece of information. So you will have to find someone who hates your brother as much as we do. There is a recent arrival that I think is particularly ripe for the assignment. Oh, that's good. Goodbye, Ivan, and good luck. Yes, that's very good indeed. Here. Say something. 
we're both just as trapped, Catherine. I empathize with you. I too despise this place, but it's my duty, my expectation, my life's purpose to rule this dreadful domain. And therefore, I'm dedicated to this place as a stone is to a wall. There are days that I wish this wall would crumble, though I know it never will. When I said that I needed you, it was true, but in more than one way. I need you for my queen, but also because I had hoped that someone like you would empathize with me and help me bear this crown's weight. But if I'm not fit to bear the title of Lucifer, there's no hope for you and no hope for us. I'm sorry. What? I said, I'm sorry. I didn't realize how you felt. I shouldn't have said anything. Please, don't feel sorry for me. I'm the one who brought you down here. I should be hated for such a crime. But I don't hate you. I hate this place. We cannot change what this place is. Yes, we can. You are Lucifer. You don't have to live in the shadow of your father. You can change things here. You've simply lost faith. Faith in what? Faith in yourself. And how am I to restore that faith? My mother is dying. My brother wants me exiled. Who am I to turn to? Screw tape? Turn to me. You chose me so that I might find beauty in you. I've caught a glimpse of that beauty, but I fear no one else can see it. However, I have faith people will see your beauty. And if I'm needed by your side for that beauty to shine, so be it. Catherine? Stop! What is it, Scrute? There's been a tragedy in the house. Go on. Madame Sentry is dead. How sudden. When will she be buried? Tomorrow, sir. Very well. Then it shall be a funeral and a wedding. Sir, the throne cannot be left unattended. We need a new ruler. Therefore, our wedding will be held tomorrow morning, along with the burial and coronation. Um, yes. Indeed, sir. Right away, sir. The preparations made out immediately. And congratulations. Goodbye, Scrooge. Right away, sire. Are you ready? Yes, I am. you misunderstood me. I meant a Lucifer. I am from the same royal bloodline, but I am not the ruler of hell. I am his brother, Ivan. Have you heard of me? I cannot say that I have. Pity. I believe you must have heard of my brother's return to hell. It's hard not to hear of such thing. So you must know of his wife then. I've heard that she is beautiful, but I do not know her name. Oh, her name is twice as pretty as her face. It's quite Melodious to say, even at a lack of music. Catherine, such a pretty name. Catherine? He brought Catherine down here. Do you know of her? I nearly married the woman. 
That's how you got down here, isn't it? You wanted Catherine, so Lucifer gave you a deal. But then he took her away from you. Yes! That is my tragic tale, and I play it in my head every day. You don't need to repeat it. We have something in common, you and I. Which is? Lucifer has taken something from both of us. What has he taken of yours? The title of Lucifer, through the privilege of being the firstborn son. I would do anything to have that title, just as you would do anything to have Catherine. Yes, but what can we do about either of those things? The only way to get both of our bounties is to kill Lucifer, but we can't simply kill him. He's the devil. What if he wasn't? What if I told you that as of his final vows, he would become human? I would kill him! Why are you telling me this? Because I cannot kill him. According to our ancient texts, a Lucifer cannot betray his own bloodline. Should one do so, one should sacrifice his own life. So you need me to kill him? You're rather to the point, aren't you? Yes. I need you to kill him. And I figured you would be the best choice. You yourself implied you would like to kill my brother. What would you be willing to give me in return? I could give you treasures. I could give you protection. I could even give you some power over a region of hell. On one condition. What condition? You must kill Catherine as well. What? I mean, how could you even? That isn't fair. Boy, if you are content with an eternity of torment, if you are content with the hunger you feel when you eat, or the thirst when you drink, then by all means, you can deny yourself the pleasure of your revenge upon my brother. But I offer you a way out, a chance to liberate yourself, to have sinned without any consequences. Accept it, or deny it as you will. Wait! How do I kill them? <laughs> we are gathered here today for the dedication to one life. This is the time when two people, coming from two lives, make themselves fit for one. Neither of these two believe that they should give half of who they are in the pursuit of happiness, but all themselves, all that is good and all that is bad, so they shall live dedicated to who they both are. Lucifer, do you profess this to be the truth? I do. And Catherine, do you profess this to be the truth? I do. These two claim to forgive each other's faults and to reconcile with each other in order to secure their holy bonds which they forge here today. Lucifer, do you profess this to be the truth? I do. And Catherine, do you profess this to be the truth? I do. These two claim to share all that they have with each other. They will share their belongings, their services that either one requires, their most intimate moments, and the example they'll make for those who follow them. Lucifer, do you profess this to be the truth? I do. And Catherine, do you profess this to be the truth? I do. And finally, these two claim to preserve their vows for the sake of a peaceful rule over hell, with Catherine as queen, who shall rule at Lucifer's side until either their deaths. Catherine, do you accept this burden? I do. And Lucifer, as you've been called since the death of your father, I am to seal that title upon you as a name, which dedicates a great responsibility on your shoulders. Are you ready to accept such a responsibility? I am. Then let it be so. I pronounce you Lucifer the Fifth and Queen Catherine. Raise the scepter! No! I'm sorry. Do not lay a hand on her, Alexander. Who are you? I am a messenger of the Lord. I am here to rescue this innocent girl. This is not your dominion. 
Go back, or else. Or else what, Ivan? I understand that I address the next of Lucifer, but need I remind you that my master has transcended even the mightiest of your rulers. For I come here upon invitation. For what invite you here? Love is the very essence the Lord is made of, Ivan. He feels its presence everywhere, even in the most unlikely of places. And today the Lord felt it here, in this marriage between two who truly love each other. For it is this love that beckons me here. And while I cannot preserve your brother's life, I offer him a chance to reconcile with me. A chance offered to no Lucifer before. And as for his bride, I am to lead her to my domain, where they may one day meet again. Come, Catherine. Wait, wait, please. Let me just have one moment with my husband. Very well. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It wasn't supposed to end this way. Please, forgive me. Catherine, I just proclaimed that I would forgive you. That I would share all that I have with you. And I would give you my whole self. This is how it has to end. This is what we both wanted. Now we can both be free. I'm only sad that no one else down here wants that. They're ignorant from how alone they are. I'm only sorry that we couldn't be together a little longer. We will be. You'll see. We will be, Lucifer. And Lucifer's not my name. What is it? My name is... Goodbye, and may you find peace. And may this serve as an exhibit that love transcends evil. And that while there are times where evil will succeed, love stands beyond the test of evil, wickedness, and time. For love, as true as Lucifer's, will truly conquer all. Abandon your petty weapons that are instruments of hate. Instead, take up the chalice of love and drink its sweet wine. For there you'll find happiness and substance enough to live past the longest of wars. It is not difficult to do this. As Lucifer showed you, even the blackest of souls can find love in their heart.